So in general, to solve a quadratic equation by completing the square, you're going to make your quadratic equation look like this. You're going to take your constant value and you're going to subtract it over to the other side or add it if it's negative. So that's what we did on this previous example. We took this negative 6, added 6 over there. Okay. And the second step, you're going to complete the square on the quadratic side of the equation. So remember you do that by taking half of the middle term, whatever you get, you square it. If you add, if you add that on the left-hand side, you have to add it to the right-hand side. So going back over here, that's what we did. We took half of that number and got 4. Squared it got 16, so you have to add 16 to both sides. All right, last step. On that quadratic side where you completed the square, you're going to factor it and then take the square root of both sides. Remember, in the process of solving an equation, you take a square root, you need to have two answers, plus or minus. So that's what we did here. We factor the left-hand side, and remember, the number that goes inside the parentheses is just the number that we get whenever we took half of it. Take the square root of both sides, and you get plus or minus the square root of 22, and then just add or subtract that constant value of her. So let's try another example. So this one's a little bit different just because we have a leading coefficient of 3 before we had 1s. So that's all right in this case, especially since everything here is divisible by 3. So just write down your equation, divide both sides by 3, and it's all gone. 3x squared minus 36x plus 150 equals 0. Divide both sides by 3 we get x squared minus 12x plus 50 equals 0. Okay, you might try and try and try and factor that left-hand side, and uh, maybe you get nowhere. So let's try completing the square. We're going to subtract this 50 over here. We get x squared minus 12x plus something. That's what we're going to have to complete the square with. Equals negative 50 plus that same something. <clears throat> so... Take half of the negative 12, that middle term, negative 6. I have to pull that negative sign with it. And now square that number and get 36. If I add 36 to the left-hand side, add 36 to the right-hand side. So it stays equal. Now I factor the left-hand side as x minus 6 squared. It's that middle term right there. Uh, the half of the middle term, anyway. That's Rowan in the background screaming some more. And over here on the right-hand side, we have negative 14. Okay, so when we take the square root of both sides, you see we have a negative 14. This means that we're going to have imaginary numbers. So taking the square root, I get x minus 6 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 14. If you have a negative inside the square root, you factor that thing out as plus or minus i square root 14. The square root of 14 doesn't simplify because you only have 2 and 7. Okay, so then finally add your 6 over. x equals 6 plus or minus i square root 14. Notice that whenever they're complex numbers, just like this one, you still get conjugate pairs. And this always happens whenever you have answers that are either irrational or complex like this.